Hi, I'm Russ with ESPService.com and today I'm going to show you how to set the timer parameters on your two button digital timer. I have the timer on a bench fixture here today. It's out of the bed and I just wanted to show you um, just the functionality of it. The two button digital timer is common to focus models, a lot of oasis models, um, it's in radiance models and um, other various models uh, but basically those are the really common ones where you see the uh, two button timer. A two button timer might have a bezel that looks like this and an overlay that looks like this but they have all kinds of different configurations. Um, basically the, uh, the two button timer as opposed to like a four button timer uh, just simply has two buttons on there. There is set time on the left and start stop on the right. Now when you uh, plug the bed in for the very first time the timer display will go through a startup sequence. I'm going to unplug the fixture and I'm going to plug it back in and show you the startup sequence. It's, this one starts out with 5.4 and L, a 9.9 point, .9 .9 a 20 and there's two double dashes. Take note of that and there's a CC and then now it goes to zero. This is when the bed, uh, when the timer is in, a, uh, in an idle standby mode waiting for your input. So when we go to actually set the timer parameters we need to trigger that startup sequence. You can trigger the startup sequence again by unplugging and plugging the bed back in or you can simply press and hold the start stop button and then also the set time button simultaneously and you see the two double dashes there. Then it runs through the startup sequence. L 9.9.20. Yours might look different than this. You might have different numbers and characters but what we're doing is just basically triggering the startup sequence. Now when you trigger the startup sequence it's important to note when you see the two dashes when you trigger the sequence properly it might take a couple of times of practice or like I said unplug the unit and plug it back in but when you see the two dashes on the display that is your cue to press and hold both buttons in until the display goes out and then you remove the buttons I'm going to trigger the startup sequence now to show you that by hitting hitting and holding start stop and then also set time I release when I see the two double dashes there and then when I, I'm waiting for the two single dashes and I'm going to press both buttons in. Now I'm holding both of them in, now it goes out, I release and you see OP and then 1. This is proper. This right now is telling you that the operating mode is it's set to 1. It can either be 0, 1 or 2. One is the factory setting. To keep it at the factory, well if you wanted to modify it for some reason you would hit the set time button and you can actually change the value and you can see it can be a value of one, two, or zero and it cycles through. So I'm going to leave it at one. When you have it at the desired value then press the start stop button and it's going to advance to the next parameter and then show you the value of it. The next parameter is AD and it's 99 you can see. AD is the address. This bed is set to address 99. If you have this in a salon and you have numerous beds off of the same master timer you would set each bed to its own unique address. In this case I would roll it over to 1 and then I would leave it at that. If I had a second bed I would address it at number two, a third bed, number three, and so on. You can't have beds that have the same address off of the same master timer. So now that the address is set I'm going to hit the start stop button and it's going to go to the next value which is PD and it's at zero. PD is uh, the pre-start delay time. This is how much time that the timer waits until starting the bed after the customer has pressed the start button. Since I want to leave this at zero, I'm going to move I'm going to move on to the next parameter by hitting the start stop button and SL is the next one and it's set for 20. 
SL is your maximum session time limit and that's set at 20 minutes. Uh, you might have a 15 minute bed, you might have a 10 minute bed, uh, this would be the maximum session uh, that you could that you could set on there. And it will not let you go higher than it's programmed from at the factory. So um, if, you, if it was programmed for being a 10 minute timer from the factory, that's the maximum that you will be able to set it to. If I wanted to change it, I would hit the set time button and you see it cycles from 2 and it'll go back up to 20. When it's at the value you want, you hit the start stop button, it advances to the next parameter. CD, and it's at zero. CD is the cooldown time. That's the delay that, that is imposed upon the bed after the session ends before the next session can actually start. If you wanted to force a 10 minute cooldown time, for instance, you could go here and set it to 10 and then you would hit start stop and then advance to the next parameter. I don't recommend necessarily having that so I'm going to leave it at zero and I'm going to hit the start stop button and go to the next one. The next one is 3P and it's at zero. This is the most common issue that may develop with this timer, especially if somebody mashes the buttons and they don't know about this programming procedure, they might inadvertently put the third party mode, that's what 3P is, if they put the third party mode to a mode other than zero, it locks out the timer and it's waiting for a signal from another master timer. So if you do not have a configuration where you're using a third party timer, you do not want to have it in third party mode especially standalone beds need to be with the 3P parameter set to zero. So I'm going to hit start stop and go to the next parameter which is R. It's a lowercase r that's at zero. Run mode can be set to either zero or one and those are the only two parameters. Zero means the bed starts immediately after the delay and one would mean that after the delay the session begins but only when the user presses start stop. So I'm going to leave that at zero and then I'm going to go on to the next parameter by hitting start stop and I see P. P is the pause mode. If it's, It can only be zero or one. Zero means that the timer will keep counting down when the session is paused. One means that the timer will stop counting down when the session is paused. I'm going to leave it at 1 and hit start stop to go to the next parameter and it goes to CB which stands for clean bed. If this is enabled it would be set to 1. Disabled is 0. 1 when it's enabled means that when the timer is done with the session then the bed has to be cleaned before being able to start again. This triggers the clean clear mode which would be right after this parameter and zero means that you clear it with a press and release and one means that you clear with press and release press and hold it for four seconds. That would mean that the person that goes in and cleans the tanning bed after the use would have to clear it out until the timer can be started again. I'm going to leave this at zero and then when I hit start stop to go to the next parameter it's actually going to it's not going to do the clean clear mode because there is no um, clean bed mode so it's going to go right back to the initial uh, startup sequence so here we go 54 L 0 1 20 there's the two double the two dashes and then the um, CC and then the timer um, should be set to how you want it. Again, you would only have the CC for the clean clear if you turn the CB for clean bed to one for on. And that's how to set the timer parameters on your two button digital ESB timer.